Unfortunately, eating disorders are prevalent amongst young women. It's especially true amongst young female athletes. Uh, there are two primary eating disorders that I want to discuss here, and we're only going over basic information. This is not enough to treat women that may have these or even identify the women who do. Um, that is not the purpose of this video. You need a lot more information, a lot more training and education to be able to do that. Anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa are the two types of eating disorders we're going to discuss here. Anorexia nervosa, or anorexia uh, for short, is the refusal to maintain minimal normal weight. Uh, the common features of this are distorted body image and fear of fatness. Amenorrhea is very common, so loss of menstrual cycles and dramatic weight loss. Uh, bulimia nervosa is a purging behavior that typically occurs after meals and prevents weight gain or proper weight maintenance. And so this has a lot of the same features we discussed up here, and this is not a full list of the features for either of these uh, conditions. There are far more symptoms and features or uh, warning signs that you should be aware of that we're not going into here. People with bulimia often have recurrent binge eating, so they uh, eat a lot of food, and following binge eating, purging behaviors often occur. So this can be vomiting, this can be laxatives, uh, diuretics, or excessive exercise. Those are all forms of purging behaviors that can decrease the weight of an individual after they have consumed a, a substantial or even normal portion of food. Some additional information about eating disorders. Uh, young women are, have the highest prevalence. This includes young female athletes, uh, but young men do also uh, have the risk of developing eating disorders as well. Uh, certain sports do tend to encourage this behavior more, and they should be more careful about wording and um, sort of team at Atmospheres, aesthetic sports, so think diving, figure skating, ballet, gymnastics, uh, cheerleading as well, uh, endurance sports, distance running, cycling, weight class sports, jockeying, boxing, wrestling, all those have high prevalence of eating disorders. Some additional information about eating disorders is that they are addiction disorders, so this is a psychological disorder requiring psychological counseling and help. Um, the behavior is often reinforced by the media, by their parents, their coaches, and teammates. Um, so you want to be careful about how you interact with your uh, with your athletes and your you know, the people who look up to you or who you have in some way that are in within your care. Um, they can often be accompanied by denial, so people who don't believe they actually have an eating disorder, and they can become life-threatening, so it's not something you want to ignore or diminish the importance of. Um, people who have eating disorders, or if you suspect somebody has an eating disorder, they really do need to get clinical help. Um, it is outside the scope of practice of exercise physiologists, athletic trainers, coaches, physical educators, in order to treat them. They can look for the warning signs and try to discuss it with the athlete, specifically trying to refer them to a specialist, um, typically a dietitian and a psychologist of some sorts, um, but it is outside their scope of practice to actually treat it. In another video, I'm going to discuss the female athlete triad, which may or may not involve eating disorders, and it oftentimes does lead to health consequences, especially bone mineral density issues.